civil war has raged in Syria for nearly two years. As the death toll mounts and the violence continues, a dire humanitarian crisis deepens. When you look at the humanitarian situation in Syria, you see the clear consequences of the slaughter that's been going on and that in fact is escalating. The United Nations Office for the High Commissioner of Human Rights has estimated that 60,000 people have died, but we don't really know. We don't know how many people have been killed. The, the tracking, the counting, the statistics are all the best estimates that the international community has come up with. We're pretty certain that there are about 600,000, 620,000 refugees in neighboring countries, and we can count those. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees has a system for registering re refugees who arrive across borders from Syria. But we also know that there are far more people people that are displaced inside Syria that haven't been able to make it to a border. The, the Syrian Arab Red Crescent Society estimates that there are two and a half million, but some estimates suggest that most people in Syria are displaced, are not staying in their homes. Escalating violence in Syria has forced tens of thousands of Syrians to flee their homes and communities. But there are other reasons for their flight. It's a country that's on the move. People are, are displaced by the violence, by the conflict, but also by the lack of public services, by the lack of medical care. There are, you know, jobs are very, very scarce. Bread is scarce. Electricity goes off. You know, people are living in times of terrible uncertainty that we Americans can barely imagine. Turkey and other neighboring countries have opened their borders to Syrians fleeing the violence. With a dramatic increase in the number of refugees likely, humanitarian officials are concerned that this goodwill can't last indefinitely. So far, all the neighboring countries have allowed refugees to enter, which is a, a crucial concern for, the, for their protection. But, you know, there are questions about will these borders remain open if the numbers double? Or in the worst case scenario, the UN is planning if they triple in the next few months. Uh, the, the numbers have shown a dramatic increase in the past couple of months and, and seem likely to increase even further. And, you know, hospitality has its limits, particularly if the local population perceives that refugees are getting more than they are, that they're being favored in some way. It's, it's inevitable that resentments build up. And most of the refugees in the neighboring countries aren't living in camps, but they're living in the community, renting apartments or staying with family or friends or, or other groups that are making this available. Refugees and displaced persons experience a host of difficulties, medical and emotional trauma, that don't always make the headlines. I don't think we're hearing very much about people who've been injured. We hear a lot about casualties, you know, 60,000 dead, maybe 90,000 dead. But usually, you know, there's a high ratio of injured people. And injured people need medical care. You know, people need help with setting broken bones and dealing with terrible lacerations. And you know, an article in the Washington Post this week about the large number of people who've got spinal cord injuries who are paralyzed and need, need medical treatment to survive and the toll that that places on families. We're not hearing much about the separation of families. What what it means when a mother and her children make it to safety but the father stays home or vice versa. You know, that separation of families is something that in every refugee and displacement situation people care desperately about. We're not hearing much about the human toll on people. Beyond the numbers, there are human realities that we need to be thinking about.